Microsoft makes its official announcement of Windows Phone 8 to the public. Windows Phone 7.8 will be available for legacy devices, and the marketplace currently has 100,000 apps and counting. All this and more coming up right now. Hello everyone, I'm Jaime with PocketNow.com and welcome to Windows Phone View, the show where we wrap up all this week's good and bad inside the world of Microsoft's Windows Phone platform. Now, this week we're starting off a little different because we usually begin with Android Revolution, but there are so many good news with Windows Phone 8. Let's start this week off with what's good. All right, so there's a lot of multi being mentioned in Windows Phone 8, so let's begin. First of all, you get multi-core support. In the past, you only got single core support, so you were pretty much limited to what you could do with the phone, even though it was blazing fast. But multi-core includes dual core, quad core, it'll all depend on Microsoft and the roadmap for the future. Aside from that, you get multiple resolutions being supported. In the past, you only got WVGA, and now you'll be getting WXGA, which would be 1280 by 768, and also 720p. That's really good. Other than that, you get Internet Explorer 10, which ports a much better engine for JavaScript HTML5. It was being shown on the videos and it was extremely faster in comparison to other platforms. You get micro SD support. In the past, you didn't get expansion options on Windows Phone, which was kind of limited. And other than that, you also get NFC support. There are a lot of really good changes coming with Windows Phone 8. Probably one of the biggest ones that I haven't mentioned is the new start screen. In the past, you were pretty much stuck with just two different types of live tiles, but you couldn't determine which ones were bigger or smaller. Now you'll be able to determine which ones are smaller or bigger. You get three sizes to choose from. They're all really good, kind of a little clutter in my taste probably, but I'd like to hear what you think in the comments down below. Tell us about it, but there's just so much to talk about Windows Phone 8 that hit the link down below with the description. It'll give you all the details of everything that's being launched with Windows Phone 8 as of whenever they get it launched, and that's probably what we're going to be talking about in the bad section. Now let's put all the rumors to a rest. One of our biggest concerns with Windows Phone 8 was legacy devices, and Microsoft does have our back. The list of Windows Phone 8 features that are coming don't make any sense to be supporting legacy devices because they don't have multi-core, they don't have NFC. There are a lot of features there that Microsoft's pretty tied up with hardware limitations to be able to bring these features to old devices. But Microsoft's gonna be launching Windows Phone 7.8, and they're gonna be bringing the same Windows Phone Phone 8 UI and user experience to the Windows Phone 7 devices, legacy devices, but you won't be getting the features that are hardware specific like NFC, multi-core support, etc, etc. So apparently even applications that are ported for Windows Phone 8 specifically won't be backward compatible, but we're not really sure if that's only, you know, multi-core dependent or what's going to be the case there. But Again, you're still going to be getting the same UI, it's just going to be limited to the things that your device will be able to support or not. Not sure what's going to happen with Tango devices, but these are really good news. So, one of the biggest things here is that the rumors are that we are going to be getting Windows Phone 7.8 on devices like the Nokia Lumia 900 very soon. Next couple of weeks means a lot, so we're not sure what soon means, but hopefully we will be getting it before you know, July, August, not sure what the time frame is going to be, but it's going to be really cool to get this update really soon for legacy devices. Now, I left one of the coolest features of Windows Phone 8 separately for obvious reasons. It's cool enough to have its own segment, and the reason why is because Microsoft is building this new speech recognition service that's far superior than Siri and even S-Voice, in my opinion. The reason being is because Microsoft is not only porting the service for the device itself, but also is bringing these APIs to developers so developers can create specific commands for in-app services of speech that are currently not being supported supported for other, you know, iOS, for example, with Siri, only supports launch with iOS 6, and S-Voice is kind of a mixed bag. Microsoft is bringing this service, and we haven't really seen it in action other than within the demo, so it's going to be really interesting to see how Microsoft plans to handle this, because obviously there is a new type of multitasking coming to Windows Phone 8, so not really sure how you're going to be able to control music on a separate app like, for example, Spotify, with their specific commands, and having that not come in conflict with other commands with other applications applications. Time will tell, but again, it's really cool to see that Microsoft is really changing things here because definitely those APIs are going to be quite useful. The only problem will be having to memorize this. 
I hope that Microsoft figures out a way for this to be artificial intelligence for the device to actually learn the commands that you bring and not necessarily focus on giving you specific things that you'll have to memorize, but time will tell. Now there are two different integrations coming with Windows Phone 8 that are definitely unique. First of all, Skype is going to work as it should. You'll now not be able to tell the difference whether you're getting a Skype call or a typical voice call coming from your device. Now, not really sure how they plan to make things happen whenever you want to make a call for you to be able to select within Skype or the phone line. I really hope they make it better with, than Android, for example, where in Android you have to be selecting where you want to make the call from. I hope it's a simple switch within Windows Phone and you can actually just switch it back whenever you want something different. Not sure how that's going to happen, but hopefully that's going to be really cool when it comes out. Another interesting note coming out is the fact that Nokia Maps and Navtech are pretty much going to be the new map service coming to Windows Phone 8. So we will be getting turn-by-turn -turn navigation natively. You don't require a Nokia phone from now on to be able to have this service. Not sure if that's coming to Windows Phone 7.8, but hopefully that will be the case now. Obviously that means that Bing Maps is gone. I'm not sure why Microsoft is canning it and not bringing turn-by-turn -turn to Bing Maps, but interesting to see those kind of joint ventures. Whenever you least expect that you'll be hearing the voice saying, hey, we just bought Nokia, but why not? They just come out with their Surface tablet, so why not? And speaking of Surface, let's end the good section talking about it. Microsoft is finally launching another product, like they did with the Zune. No comment on that one. But like they did with the Xbox, now we're finally getting a computer from Microsoft. And it's gonna be called the Microsoft Surface. Not the old table, this is gonna be a tablet, but it's gonna be a really unique tablet because first of all, you're gonna have a cover that's actually also a keyboard. Don't think about the iPad because this is coming directly from Microsoft and it's totally a different technology. You're also getting this really cool kickstand at the back so you can be able to use your tablet in different ways without depending on accessories to make it work the way it should. Now what's interesting is you will be getting a Windows RT version, Windows 8 RT, sorry, and you will be also getting an enterprise version that's going to be much more expensive. Apparently the Windows RT version is going to be slated in prices around where the iPad is, and then you'll also have the enterprise version and prices that are going to be leveling around the laptop way. Kind of interesting because this is pretty much a new form factor for a laptop if you could consider it. Not sure how Apple is going to react to that with their future iPads or whatever you know laptops they release eventually because probably my biggest concern with Microsoft is launch dates, release dates. You never get them. They take months to happen and they give competition a good heads up on what to do. And honestly, this Surface device is really cool. All right, so that does it for the good. Let's continue on with what's bad. And again, as I mentioned in the past segment, what really gets us worried about Microsoft is timeliness. It's release dates. We never get them. All we get is the fall, the holiday season. They never come out with a specific date of when we'll be getting a product. And you know what the problem with that is? Competition. You know, Android, for example, is going to take very little time to come out with that little keyboard cover. We've already seen the Logitech keyboard cover with the keyboard coming to the iPad. So the problem with Microsoft is specifically that they take too long from when they announce something to when they launch it, and they're pretty much notorious from being late in some of the things. Now, I do understand the purpose of being late for it to be great. That's fine, but the problem is competition is so fierce that Microsoft's innovation goes down the drain with competition pulling it out first and then calling it theirs. You know what I'm talking about. So, sadly, Surface is a really great product. I have a really good impression on it. So do I have for Windows Phone 8, but sadly, it's going to be pointless if everything happens with competition at the same time. You know, the iPhone 5 or whatever is going to be launched in the fall with Windows Phone 8, and what are people going to choose? That's really the problem with Microsoft lately. They take too long, and I really do miss the old Bill Gates days when they wouldn't make announcements. Windows 95 was already out before they announced it. That's really the way they should go back to the roots. The innovation is so good, don't announce it. Just launch the thing. I know you'll be successful. That's it for today's show. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Jaime Rivera. Remember to give us a thumbs up if you like what you saw. That's it for now.